for those of you that have stayed the course for 60 days and you did not miss this meeting for one night. Here is the word of the Lord for you. Numbers. Numbers, because you are numbered. Your entire generation is numbered. You are completely encircled by the Lord. You are not counted. You are numbered. Nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing wasted. You are numbered. Your children are born, numbered. Children alive, numbered. Generations to come, numbered. Everything that is yours, they are now under the government of God. It's not my word. It is the word of the Lord. I am just a postmaster and I'm saying to you for coming to this point and sacrificing every day, coming out, uh, not sleeping, keeping watch. Sometimes you slept off, but you came, okay? But you are always there and the angels are numbered. You are numbered in the name of Jesus. Your generation, they are all numbered. Nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing wasted. Mark my word, nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing wasted. Numbers, you are numbered by God, not by man. You are numbered, not counted, not counted. If you number something, you know the number. You know what number has a problem. Number 15, number 14, number 30, you are numbered. Everything belonging to you. They are now under the government of God, I repeat. Not, nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing wasted. Numbers, I'm coming to 31 verse 49. But I need to let you know that the entire book of Numbers was about two things. Number one, the numbering. And number two, the presentation of the Urim and the Tumim. Those two things were characteristics of the books of Numbers. In Numbers chapter one, about 603,550 men and sites, women and children from 20 years and above were counted or were numbered. For those who left the wilderness, those who left Egypt, Contrary to Moses' prayer to God, not to destroy them. All those who left Egypt still died in the wilderness while Moses was alive. So the second census, the second numbering, revealed, <clears throat> it was revealed in Numbers chapter 26, verse 51, when 601,730 men, Aside women and children. Now, those guys that were born in the wilderness had now become 20, and then they had to be numbered. And this was despite the 200,000 of Korah's revealed men, okay, men that were destroyed in, you know. And um, it was in Numbers 26, verse 63, that we saw that Moses was actually alive when God killed all that were left, all that had left Egypt. 20 years and above male. So numbering happened twice to a destructive, disobedient generation that were numbered in the beginning, they were destroyed at the end. And then another numbering now happened for those that were fatherless, completely fatherless. Everything that is disobedient in your life, everything, every place that you have struggled in your life, it is, my con it is my announcement, not my conceived opinion. It is God's announcement through me today that they are completely consumed. One after the other, you begin to see yourself come out of yourself. Of yourself. You begin to see deliverance from your pro proclivities, deliverance from your, from your uh, Adamic nature, from your uh, a, a, a complete departure from your human nature, okay? a complete transformation of your spirit, soul, and body. Okay, stay with me. That is what is happening. 
first thing all flesh all flesh died in the days of noah okay that particular portion of your life that you are struggling in and you couldn't define the your entire essence in christian living okay now it will die as this People died in the wilderness for being disobedient. That part of you is gone. You will not know your way back to them anymore. And then a new generation came up that were numbered, but they were fatherless. Okay, they were completely fatherless. They didn't have anybody. Their fathers were killed. All right, completely slain. All right, that God may be their father. This is the word of the Lord for you. As that part of you that is humanistic, that part of you, that is of human nature, of Adamic nature, that part of you that cannot be righteous, that part of you that cannot be, that cannot follow Jesus, that part of you that cannot find purity in God, that part of you that cannot see Christian living as being practical, that part of you that will still be anointed speaking in tongues and be, and be lying, you know, and be associated with falsehood is gone, is dead. And you begin to see, you begin to see without humility, okay? The second thing is, your newness of life, God will now be your father. God will now be your father to take you away, a sharp departure from a traditional, uh, religious, uh, uh, human nature and all of those to take you away from that to begin to teach you in the way of transformation. That's, those are the two things uh, that will happen to you. The third one is your hearts and your lips will align in this season. You will be one, you will be focused, you will be single. Your light will be true light, okay? It will be true light. And that light will not have any darkness inside. No more lying. You will be very, you, God will give you mastery over your proclivities in this season. And then you'll be able to speak to God just as it is coming from your heart. And when you do that to God, God will make it so easy to do that to man so that you will honor man by not lying to them. The least honor you can ever give to a man is to tell him the truth. Don't ever forget. The least honor you can give to any man is to say the truth, all right? Um, and then that is urine. Uh, God will now begin to make his own heart known to you in every matter. It will never be in the dark in the name of Jesus. It will be that the only time you will enter into darkness will be when God uh, covers you with himself and he comes as our married, the one that you find unsearchable. You look for him, you cannot find him. That is a beautiful darkness. That is a darkness that is shrouded. It's covered in God, all right? God is mystery himself. That's the only darkness that will be allowed to be in your life, finally. The fear of God called reverent, reverent fear, reverent fear is the that reverent fear from heaven is the one that will locate you and locate your entire dynasty in the name of Jesus. Now I go to 31 or oh, 32, um, 31 verse 49, 31 verse 49, 31 verse 49. Numbers 31, 49. And they said to Moses, your servants have taken account of the men of war who were under our command and not a man of us is missing. It is the word of the Lord to you today. Not one, not one will be missing in your life. We've counted those that are under our command. Everyone has taken over the command of your life. If you recall what I said, it was very clear, very definite that God has numbered you and God has taken over the government of your life. Nothing missing, nothing wasted, nothing, nothing broken. And for, as God has taken over your life, it means uh, you are under God's command from today, all right? And so every thing about you everyone that matter to you they've been numbered in the name of jesus nothing no one is missing from your constituency in the name of jesus there is the 
power of God to break yoke today. This power is present as a guest. Okay, it's an elemental structure that comes in the cool of the day to provide bread to everyone that needs it. Okay, and it's available today. All right, if you are ready, it's available for you. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Okay. Power breaking strength of God is available today. Yoke will be broken today. Why? Because the power of God is available to break yoke. If you know me too well, you will know that I'm not a frivolous person. I don't speak carelessly. All right? I am announcing to you what is available today. Okay? I am announcing to you what is available today. Amen. So get ready. Put yourself together. That yoke will be broken. It is the bread that is available for children. It will be broken. Okay? Amen. All right. Lord, we thank you. We are grateful for all that you have done. On behalf of the house, I am thanking you. And everyone here, we together are standing before you. I'd like to say that I'm representing them because I do not know whether they are thanking you like I am. But I thank you. Because 60 days, you preserved us. You gave us the strength, which, which I will not take for granted. I thank you because of the strength you've given to us personally to obey you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for calling us your own. In this season and in this time, you have announced to us that you have found a people. We thank you. Known to God are his works from eternity. We are grateful. Thank you, Almighty, because within these 60 days, you have done great, great, mighty wonders. Part of the things you've done is by faith, we believe that you have made us to become your own son. You've given us the right. You've given us access. You've shown us the how. And also we thank you for doing doing the things that you've done for us. They are immeasurable. They are countless. We are grateful. We are thankful and we do not take these things for granted in any way, shape or form. We thank you, almighty God. We honor you for everyone that is present here today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty God, because to you belong strength. To you also belong power. And you've given us strength. You've given us power. Power is different from strength. You've given us the continuous ability to stay in your presence. That is strength. We thank you, almighty God, since we started. I thank you, O God, for the things you've helped me to do. Thank you for the sacrifices you've helped us to make. Thank you, almighty God, because today you have now begun your own journey in our lives. You've given us the strength to join in you. Now, you are now taking over from here. Thank you, Almighty, for making your government and governance to be available to us in this season in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We honor you. We give you praise. 
Lord God Almighty, we are grateful. We are thankful for the things that you've done. Thank you, Almighty God and everlasting Father. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for the things that you've done. Your church is marching on and the gate of hell shall not prevail over your church. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We honor you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I like you to thank God. I like you to offer your thanksgiving to God. Wherever you are, I like you to thank him for this season. Thank him for the 60 days. Thank him. Thank him. How many of you as uh, you've, you've not uh, had the privilege of partaking in a long uh, video like this? You know, those of us that, you know, that stay the course, you know, how many of you are doing this for the first time? You know, it's, it's worth thanking God to say, Lord, I thank you that you could even give me the grace, give me the strength to come this far. And I believe that from today, you own me, your government. Your government will be exercised in my life, will operate in my life. In the name of Jesus, your mark will be upon me. Your mark will be upon everything, everything, everyone that is with me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, that I will be kept and I will be preserved. I am grateful. I need you to offer your thanksgiving to God. Thank you, Lord. Offer your thanksgiving to God. I need you to speak to God. I need you to thank him. Please, it's not, uh, it's not that we don't have what to do, okay? We are not just marking time. Thank him. Thank you, Lord. We honor you. We give you praise. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Almighty God. Great testimonies that you have recorded amongst us, countless. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. It's by divine direction that I didn't open any testimony except the one that he, you know, the ones he led me to, to open. Thank you, Lord, for changed lives. Thank you, Lord. We do not take these things for granted. Yoruba will say, oh, Farak Jewaniya, which means you make yourself available to us. You have not eating yourself from us, even in plain sight. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We honor you. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I have said that the power of God is here today to break yoke. It's present, it's tangible. If you pay attention, it can be felt. In every yoke, whatever yoke it is, demonic oppression, it will be broken tonight. Whatever it is, whatever challenge, whatever you're trusting God for, it is, God is available uh, to do today, all right? To do. He has helped us taught us, schooled us, scolded us, and now he's here with bread. And when he did all those for the disciples, scolding them, calling them, oh men of little, oh men of little faith, reprimanding them, okay? At the end, he called them and he gave them bread. Now bread is here, all right? Now. As always, the Spirit of God is the owner of this house. It leads us in whatever direction. And I've said, I'm not saying anything. I'm not preaching. I'm not doing anything. I'm just introducing those that God has brought to bless us with the words from the Lord and with prayer. Okay? It is the blessing of the Father. Okay? And I 
I'm here with my friend, my covenant friend and brother, my destiny partner. All right? If you are blessed with one, you are, you are, I can categorize, categorize you uh, within the circle, within the circle of men as the most blessed of men. Because uh, some, most men will walk through life without having a destiny partner at all. They are not that fortunate. I, I thank God in my lifetime. God gave me great fathers. God gave me great sages. God gave me wonderful parents. And God gave me wonderful destiny partner. Destiny partner. I thank God for him. I thank God for his mercies over him. I thank God for helping him thus far. And I told you, he's the one the Lord said I should call for tonight. <clears throat> and he is here. Um, I want to thank him. There's a lot on him. Um, I shouldn't be calling him at about this time. That is between me and him. But I thank God for replenished strength. And I thank God for yielding his call because it's not need I called. It's needed for this operation tonight. If you have been around me, you'll be hearing me say, Pastor Diki, Pastor Diki, Pastor Diki. Some people even said that, well, if Daniel cannot speak, DB cannot speak for some minutes without mentioning Pastor Diki. Um, it's my pleasure to have him here today. And I thank God for his life. Um, I'd expected him 15 minutes ago. So I'm going to extend this time by 15 minutes. <laughs> so in the next one hour, he will be he will be with us. So you get ready and receive from the Lord. God bless you. Thank you, my friend and brother. Over to God through you. Hello, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Can I get a response? Okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, DB. God bless you. Mm, okay. 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 Yeah. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning, everyone. Okay, good morning. DBI, I am delighted to be here this morning. And um, you can call me as long as there is light in you. You can trust me anywhere that I will obey you. I am your servant even though you are my friend. And I want to thank God for you and for the things that you do. Uh, I'm delighted when I see you do the things that you are doing because I have always desired to see you do it with all players. And uh, whatever I can do, to make you do what you're doing now, I will do it again and again and again and again, because for me, this is your purpose. This is your calling. Yeah, I can see some of my people greeting me. Good morning, all. I am grateful this morning. The journey has been so tiring. I know. And because when you embark on 
such a long journey, like 60 days of, of vigil, uh, it takes a lot of strength. I know that. And I'm, I'm glad that that is happening. You know, across the globe, people are joining everywhere. And I am glad that God can reach out to people who can be this faithful. I am glad. I, I rejoice in my spirit for what the Lord is doing in your midst. It's been a great work. And I am so, so happy. Thank you for this great opportunity, sir. And you know that I will never take this for granted. I am grateful. Father, we want to thank you this morning for greater is the end of a day than the beginning thereof. It's been a wonderful journey, 60 days. For Elijah, it was for 40 days. But for us, it was 60 days. We are grateful. So, so grateful. So, so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Only you desire the glory in my life. Only you desire the glory, faithful God, faithful God, you are the faithful God, oh, faithful God, hey, you are the faithful God. Only you, only you desire the glory my life. Only you desire the glory, O oh, faithful God. Only you desire the glory in our life. Only you desire the glory, O oh, faithful God. Only you desire the glory in my life. Only you desire the glory. Oh, faithful God, I am in love only you desire the glory in my life. Oh, only you desire in the glory, oh, faithful God, you are the faithful God, yes, you are. The faithful God, you are the faithful God, oh, you the glory only you, only you desire, oh, the glory, O oh, faithful God. In Jili Kiti Kopi, Le Bidi Du Sitzila, Aya Di Boku Titi Di, Ile Di Akoki Kiku, Vili Vili, Eti Viti Titi Gayela, Asi Vili Kitu Kuku, Vili Vili, Kiti Kiti, Vili Vili, only you, only you, only you, only you, only you, only you, 
of the Lord before and like some said they lost it it's growing back again it's growing back again it has come to stay the anointing has come to stay the grace has come to stay. Your confusions are over. Your afflictions are over. Running after God without knowing His presence is over in your life. Casting yourself before God without a definite touch of His presence is over in your life. I can see the air growing back again. Number two, the Lord is opening great channels into our homes. This second set of people that I'm addressing, the Lord is going past you, is going to reach out to your entire household, you are going to see strange developments 
I call it strange, not because they are evil, but it's going to be strange because it is not going to happen by the hand of, of man. God himself is reaching out to an entire family. There are people who are implicated by this. God will be domiciled within your family context and he will show himself strong and mighty. Uh, your children are going to be coming into the Lord and there's going to be, they will come in very strong. They will come in very strong with grace upon their life, with prophetic insights. God will be doing wonderful things and all eyes will know that this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight. Lord, I want to thank you for what you're doing. We give you all the way to do what you alone can do. David said, let my prayer be set forth before thee as it says, and the lifting up of my hand as the evening sacrifice. For these 60 days, there have been a lot of setting forth. People pray, but they don't set forth their prayer before thee as an incense. But for these 40 days, 60 days, men has been repositioned. Prayer has been set forth before the Lord as an incense. Incense. And everyone is drawn. And everyone has come to stay. And the lifting up of our hands, the worship, the lifting up of the holy hands as the evening sacrifice. We know the evening sacrifice is the tool for revival. The Bible says at the evening time, during the time of sacrifice, Elijah began to call upon the name of the Lord, repair the altars, and set the element in places. The element of water for water, the stones were gathered in their numbers as prescribed. The altars that have been crushed was raised, and then the fire came, the fire came. Lord, this is the time for fire to come. The sacrifice of your people. And it is time that your fire will come upon them. Because they have been set forth, even before the Lord, as an incense, to bring forth sweet aroma. Just as you smell the aroma of the sacrifice of Noah, and you bless the entire earth. And you said... That I'm making my covenant with you, Noah. And I'm making it not just for you, but through you to the entire world. And I will set my rainbows. And whenever I see the rainbow, I will no longer destroy the earth with flood. That covenant stands till today because of the sacrifice that was lifted up. It was a sacrifice for continuity. For man, we have to continue upon the face of the earth. And man, we have to pass through judgment, but there will be mercy. Before that time, there was no mercy. So the equation was balanced. The mercy of the Lord, like my friend will say, is judgment. And judgment is the mercy of the Lord. Lord, it was through that platform of that sacrifice that Noah made, that Noah secured the continue unity of the earth and father up to today why the earth remained at sea time and harvest will not cease upon the face of the earth we thank you father because it is another time and another season that we are found men of sacrifice and my lord and my god your hand of judgment can be pacified 
and make sick of being available for a generation. Thank you because the seed shall serve you and it shall be counted for a generation. Let the seed of this world who has sought after you for 60 days be counted. So countenance begins to count for them. Let, their, let them be counted. Let their seed be counted in the name of Jesus Christ. Of that time. Only a capola. Let the revival begin. Let the faith of God, let the faith of the king be unveiled. A babo to the visa superbania. A liquid defeat of something the pelamatia. Let the faith of the king, the I am that I am, the one that we are going to do. Let the faith be uncovered. Let it be uncovered. Let the truth be sustained. I am the visa of Savannah Court. The locus que va la baraki e pa la quarte de esta. A va la baraki a que de pa de ske pier. De ni coda. E di le quarte vesti so sa. De pisi so pa na vefe ni. De no a ra qua qua ki. E se pier sa dia ba. De no sa pier de ai. De ai e sa. De so pa di ai. De si sa. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Righteousness has become our lifestyle. It's no longer a struggle because of the deep work that God is doing and unveiling deep from within us. The ministry of fire has taken its effect, is fulfilling its mission in our life as a believer. Therefore, we and all that God has given to all are given to the pleasures of our God, pleasures of our God. For we are creations of pleasures. Thank you, Father. For in your presence, there is pleasure forevermore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Briefly this morning, I want to read from the book of Revelations. That is where we are this morning. Basically, there are two ministries. The ministry of his hand and the ministry of his face. We, we can't hear you very well. Can you? Can you? Hello, can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me now? 
and it's still a bit distant. Oh my goodness. This thing is right in my hand. Oh, I thought you were using a earpiece before. It was very clear before. Oh no, no. I wasn't using the earpiece. Okay. Can you hear me now? Am I am I clear now? It's still a bit farther. A bit farther? Oh, yes, sir. Can you log? Can you log out and come in again? Let's see. Okay. Because these words are true, and I don't want us to miss any of them. Wow. Hallelujah. Praise God. It is very likely. That it was the call that came in that uh, disrupted him. I just believe that we are here to receive all of that, all of what God has for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Okay. Is it better? Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Thank you. Okay, okay. I'm reading from the book of Revelation, and like I said, there are two major ministries that flows from the body of Christ to the nations of the earth. The ministry of his face and the ministry of his hand. And if we are students of the spirits, if we have been schooled in the spirit, we will know that God is done with one. And just like the Aaronic priesthood is obsolete and God has done with it and cast it out like a rag, the, the ministry of his hand, God is done with that. And you can't get so much if all you are looking for in God is what can come from God to you. So that ministry is done with. God is no longer distributing chocolates and what have you. If we really mean business with God, he wants us to come into bed with him. We will have to be responsible we will have to bore his image. So it is the ministry of his face. That's the bread that God has given to us is a higher bread, is a higher bread. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter one, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servant things which much shortly take place. I want us to look at that word and mark it things which must shortly take place. When you are given to this ministry, you are called to this ministry of seeking the face of God and not just his hand, you are not just living for what to get from God, but you are living for his pleasure. And your attention is his face. And if God is gracious enough to grant you access to his face, then one thing will be eternally achieved in you you will be accurate and you will live in the current truth. Things which must shortly take place. You cannot live in yesterday. Yesterday is beautiful. That's our history. That's where we are coming from. Where are we? Where are we going? That is strategic. That is what holds the future, knowing where we are coming from, knowing where we are, and knowing where we are going. And 
like I was saying the other time, that God is raising today not just men who can hear him, but men who have gone beyond hearing to see him. <laughs> and the reason why that is important is that these men will be given to details. They are not just to bring the word of the Lord unto us, they are to give us that word in details, in details, in details, in details. The emphasis of the spirit is detailed in this season. Detail. It has to be a detailed communication. We are not just looking for a man who can give us a word from the Lord, but a man who can give us the whole counsel. Paul said, I have not failed to declare unto you the whole counsel. And the one who can declare the whole counsel is the one who is among the counsel. That is a counsel in heaven. And it is only the one that have been called into that council that can give the whole council. Because he does not speak for himself, but he speaks for the heavenly board. The decisions of the heavenly board is what he communicates. He brings the total face of God, the perspective perspective of God over that issue, he brings it to bear, not just part of it, but the whole of it. So, so th that is the kind of people that God is raising. The revelation of Jesus, the revelation of revelations, which God gave him, that revelation is kept in Christ. And this revelation is unique and is for unique set of people in the unique seasons of life. That unique set of people has begun to emerge in the unique seasons of life. Now, it, the revelation was not given to these people, but it is given to the Lord Jesus Christ. It was entrusted unto him because of the position he has been made to sit with God. Having resurrected from the dead and raised and he ascended and, and, and sat at the right hand of God the Father, a place of the right hand is the place of honor in God uh, where he was given preeminence. And so when you get into the realms of glory, the, more, the most prominent personality you are going to meet is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the conspicuous things in heaven. It's the only thing you see. It's the only one you hear. It's the only one that will be promoted above all. So when you come into dreams of glory, the only one who is preeminent in that realm is Jesus Christ. So an office of the Christ was given unto Jesus Christ after his resurrection and ascension, and he was made seated at the right hand of God the Father. So all the goodness of the Father is administered by Christ. Is administered by Christ. All that is in the Father is administered by Christ. So he is all that filleth all in all. In the heaven, he has preeminence. He has the finacy. He has full authority. He is the dominion himself. He is the throne himself. He is the authority himself. He is the power himself. He is the principality himself. And all things consist, all things gather together for him. But on earth, he does not yet have that kind of preeminence. Oh, he doesn't have it. He's engaging us so that he can have preeminence on that. <laughs> and because of the because of the characteristics of the time and the seasons in which we live, Paul was giving us an hint into it. Is he called the perilous time, the the, the, the days of evil. Uh, it, that is the time in which we live. Evil will naturally begin to dominate the affair of humanity. The cosmos 
will be invaded by forces that have been hidden for, 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 for decades. There, there's going to be an invasion of the demonic order. The, all the hierarchy of Satan are going to be having their way and they will be so close to humanity that what was captured in Genesis chapter 6 will be repli it will be literally replicated. We're going to begin to discover the manifestations of strange men and strange flesh. Strange men with strange desires. And you will wonder, are these people human? It is because there is a crossbreed. Demons and men are meeting again to raise up giants because the seed wall is about to end. And just like God has to come in between Sarah and Abraham. <laughs> oh my goodness. For Abraham has said, let Ishmael leave. And God said, well, that's not a problem. He will leave, I will bless him. But it's not your heir. And Sarah insisted that Ishmael and Agai, the mother, must leave. And it was displeasing to Abraham because of his son. Oh my God. But the Bible said God spoke unto Abraham and said, obey the voice of your wife, Sarah. Send Agai and the son away because they will not inherit this kingdom with Isaac. God is about to do that. God took side with the woman. He took side with, the, with Sarah. He took side with the position of Sarah. He took side with the voice of Sarah. And Abraham was unable to do anything than to obey God because the seed must be preserved. It must not mingled with adulteration, with pollutions. It must not mingled with each mind. They can grow together. There's going to be a separation. God is going to amplify the voice of the woman this time around, even though she was the one who bring a guy and by extension, you know, bring about each mile. But God is going to step into the seed wall so that the true seed of men can be preserved again because the dominion will come from men, the kingdom will come from men. So whatever the devil is doing now, God's eyes is upon the seed, is watching upon the seed. And I want us to be careful to remain pure seed. I want us to be careful, careful, extremely careful in this season so that we can preserve the pure seed of the human race. Because technology will be advanced to give the demons and devil advantage. Uh, technology will, will be coming into, will be so sophisticated that it will it, 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 it look as if we don't have what it takes to create a soul. But I want to tell you, it is Satan that is trying to corrupt the, the woman's seed. God has said that the seed of the woman and the seed of the devil Oh my God, uh, for this, for, for Satan is going to bruise the heel of the, of the woman and the seed of the woman is going to cut off the head of the serpent. We are close to that and it's happening. So the Bible says that Jesus was given an office because he's the only preeminence in heaven. And because of that office, a revelation was trusted into his hand. And from his hand, he's going to get to God's servants. And what is in that revelation, that which is hidden, that is about to be unveiled, are things which must shortly take place. And he said it and signified it by his angel to his servants. Now, listen to what the scripture says. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to his servants. His servants. But when that revelation was coming, it was given to one man. Through his angel. To his servant, John. Many are going to carry this revelation. 
But the first man that we opened it was John. Who bore witnesses to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ. That was what qualified him to all the things that he saw. <laughs> Blessings he who read and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near. The time for which John spoke that this revelation will become the lifestyle of his people. He said, that time is here, is there. If it was there in the day of John, what can we say about our days? If it was so near, if it was so close, that the urgency in the heart of John was as strong as this, what can we say about that time? How urgent? How urgent? So you see what God is doing in that in abyss? How deep it is. It's because of the urgency of the season and of the time that have come upon us. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Servants are going to rise this morning. Servant without nomenclatures. Servant not necessarily apostles. Servant not necessarily prophets. Servant not necessarily evangelists. Servants not necessarily pastors. Servants with no reference points. But these servants, oh my goodness, they will bear the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's the identity. That's how you know them. They are for Jesus. Jesus lives through them. He literally lives through them. And these people are going to stumble in strange mysteries. They will step into things that have been veiled for generations. Oh my goodness. They will open mysteries and dissolve riddles. They will break out centers. They will know that they are fed from a quarter that is different from others. Because what they carry is the revelation of Jesus. They have been in the wilderness side with Jesus. Their flesh has been tempered. The fire has done his work inside of them. Righteousness has become their lifestyle. They have been brought close to the Lord. And all they carry is the revelation of Jesus. <laughs> Grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come. And from the seven spirits, who are before his throne. Hallelujah. Grace and peace from him has been given unto them. Grace has enabled them to function within Christ. Christo is their message. Peace has been given unto them. Their life is sandwiched between the peace of God and the God of peace. So their peace is not a measure of what happened within the environment, the tumor, the pains of life does not affect their peace. They are living in the true peace of him, of him. The fear of the last day is not in them because they have yielded themselves to the only fear that is permitted by God. You see, when you have yielded yourself to the fear of the Lord, then you don't fear any other thing. Because you see, the, 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 the event of the end time is not about Satan. It's about the Lord himself. Satan is just one of the characters. It's not about the Antichrist. It's not about the Marxist 60s. 
It's not about the beast. It's not about demons that will invading our planet. The, the events of the end time is about Christ coming to take preeminence upon the face of the earth. It's about him taking lordship upon the face of the earth. So it is about the Lord himself, the Lord of the ring. It's about him. It's not about any of those things. It's not about the family that will eat the earth. It's not about the plagues. It's not about him. It is to the end that he can have preeminence. And I, I am glad that you and I have been chosen as the vessel that will unveil Christ, that will give back to Christ literally. And he will begin to overtake the government and the kingdom of this world until it becomes the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. That is where we are. That is where we are. If you have not met Christ, or, or you have not seen Christ, you have not touched Christ, then the fear of the end time, you will fear tribulation, and you will ask for death before your time. Or you live in the expectation of rapture coming fast so that you can go. Because you feel the earth is going to be too hot to live in. <laughs> if God can preserve the three Hebrews in the fullness of Nebuchadnezzar, he can preserve us in the midst of the tribulation. Hallelujah. Grace to you and peace from him. Who is and who was? That's what I've come, I've come to trade with you today. The grace is given unto you and peace is given unto you so that you can be stable before the Lord. Can be stable. For so many of us, it is the fear of the events of life that is bringing us into his presence. There's something much more than that to fear. There's something much more than that to fear. Grace to you. Peace from you. Who is, who was, and who is to come. And from the seven spirit, you can imagine, who are before his throne. The seven spirit of the Lord, who is before the throne, he say, grace to this generation. Peace to this generation. That's what he is saying. And that's what the spirit is saying. Because the bride and the spirits are one. And they say the same thing. Who is before the throne? And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and watch us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and prince to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever again. If there's anything God has achieved in our midst, for these 60 days is that he has brought us into love. He has accepted us in the beloved and he has washed away all our sin by his own blood. And he has made us kings and priests. A mayor of his holy oil has been placed upon our life. Verse seven, behold, he's coming. Hallelujah. With clouds. And every eye will see him. Even they who pierce him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. <laughs> Behold, he's coming with clouds. He's coming with clouds. And every eye will see him. Every eye will see him. Hmm. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye will see him. He will descend through those clouds, and we will ascend through those clouds, and then we will see him. Even they who pierce him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, 
who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Now, I want us to pay attention now. I will just speak about, about two or three things now. Then we can pray. And I close. I draw the curtain for tonight. From verse 9. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is where the journey began. The ultimate vision that alter the position of John with respect to the compendium of revelation that the Father has given to the Lord Jesus Christ for his servant. But one is going to enter into it first as the first fruit so that all other servants can enter into it. This is where the journey began. I, John, both your brother. That is very, very important. I, John, both your brother. In this race, I am your brother. As Jesus was the first fruit from the dead, I, John, has been given the so privilege to be the first one that we entered into this compendium of revelation, the revelation of life for the end of life. I have entered on your behalf so that you can enter. So that you can enter. If he has entered, we can enter. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation. in the kingdom, in the patience of Jesus Christ. These are the three things that John partook with the Lord. He was a companion in tribulation. He was a companion of the kingdom. And he was a companion of the patience of Jesus Christ. If we have not given up on the pleasures of life itself, because it can be a distraction, it can be a distraction. <laughs> it can be a serious distraction. A companion in tribulation, because it is from that that the kingdom of God is open. So by many tribulations, you shall enter into the kingdom. A companion in tribulation. Tribulation in that sense is given once over to suffering for the sake of Christ. For the sake of Christ. That the gates of the kingdom is open. And then you partake of the patience of Christ, of Jesus Christ. The patience of Jesus Christ. You learn how to op how to wait on the Lord. That even when you have been vested with all powers, you still stay in the patience of Jesus, who has all the power yet cannot do anything on his own except whatever he sees the Father doing in the patience of Jesus Christ, who has many things to say, but will not speak until the Father is willing to speak. 
constrained by his love. The patience of Jesus Christ. This is what took me to the island of Patmos. For some of us, there's going to be a reposition. <laughs> a reposition. There is an angle and there is an elevation at which this kind of revelation can be received. It cannot be found everywhere. God was deliberate when they threw John into a burning oil. And the oil could not kill him because there's, there is still a message that he needs to bring forth. He continue in tribulation, in the kingdom, and in the patience of Jesus Christ. He never fought those that were taking him to the island of, of Patmos. He was not living for his physical life any longer. He didn't struggle. The word of the Lord came unto, unto Peter. I said, Peter, you go wherever you like, but the time and the season is upon you that you will not be able to go wherever you like again. But where you don't want to go, they will bind you and they will carry you and you, you, you won't be able to even struggle with that. These are the kind of people that God is looking for. God is going to arrange what is going to buy them for a change of position so that there will be no distraction. Re recall that I did say that this servant that God is raising are servants that are given to details. Because, you see, every detail we miss will cause us a terrible loss in the battle that mm -hmm. is before us. Every detail, every aspect of the detail that we forget or we miss, we cannot remember, we cannot recollect for, for, for whether, whether, whether that is caused by a demon or by human frailty, it is going to spare doom. And so therefore, there has to be a change of position. There has to be displacement. You are going to be taken from your comfort zone into the place where your spirit is fine-tuned to commune with God. He was taken to the island of Patmos for one reason, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Because the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. I was in the spirit on the last day. One of the things that facilitated he being in the spirit was this location. Please, location is very important. It's one of the strategic things for this time. Location is very, very important. Location will be the reason why many will be lost. Location will be the reason why many will die. Location will be the reason why many will not be able to connect with God. They will live in the past. And they will adhere to the hand of the Lord. What comes from his hand, they will never be able to see his face. I was in the spirit on the last day. And I heard behind me. So the first thing is that God has worked in us to reposition our heart. So that we can come into the same pattern that was established in John, which qualify us to receiving the revelation. Then these things, if you begin to see tribulations, don't panic. And if the kingdom begin to advance to, to you and through you, and the Lord begin to teach you on the patience of our Lord Jesus Christ, how to wait on, to, on the Lord, over every promise, over every instruction, over whatever is given unto you, how to wait until the Lord himself will make it happen. And you now begin to find yourself in strange places. Please know that you are entering into the day of the Lord. Into the day of the Lord. It, these are the signs for souls. 
<laughs> These are the signs for souls that they have entered into the day of the Lord. That they have entered into the day of the Lord. You must enter into the day of the Lord. It's not a dispensational thing per se. It is what has been done inside of you. It is what God has wrought inside of you that shows that you have entered into the day of the Lord. And in the day of the Lord, the spirit is highlighted. The spirit is highlighted. <laughs> the spirit is highlighted. The spirit is highlighted. Now, what he had behind him was not just a voice, a loud, unmistaken voice. As of trumpet with all clarity. There must be clarity. There must not be confusion again. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Signa, to Pagmos to Tiatara, to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Clear voice. This, there will be visibility and there will be clarity. This is the realm we are entering. There will be accuracy. Not just precision, but accuracy. We're going to walk 100% in the spirit. The circumcision that worship God in the spirit and has no confidence in the flesh. This is the meat that God is putting before us this morning. And John was sent to the church, to the seven churches in Asia. That seven is a representative figure of all the churches, all the kind of churches you can have in the entire globe was in that part of the world, Asia. Seven. But God is telling me he's going to raise men for Africa who will speak to the church and to the peculiarity of the church in Africa. God is going to raise men in Europe who will speak to the peculiarity and to the nature of the church in Europe. God is going to, speak, God is going to raise men servants for America, South America, North America. We're going to speak according to the peculiarity of, the, of, of, of those churches. He's going to raise servants in Asia. He's going to raise servants in Australia. He's going to raise servants in all the continents of the earth, in all the region of the earth, and they will so speak. They will so speak. They will speak with clarity. They will be patient, they will be forceful, and they will be powerful because they are bringing the return of the Lord. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, not the man that speak with me, but the voice that, oh my God. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstand, and in the midst of the seven lampstand, one like the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and gathered about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were like wool, like wool as white as snow and his eyes like flames of fire. His feet were like fine brass and as if refined in the furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of these out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not fear. 
that death was necessary because even at this stage, fear was not totally dead with. <laughs> it was as he met this personality that he has never met with him, has never met before, even though he has been with this personality for all his life. Oh my goodness. <laughs> John was the foremost among the apostles, the closest to the heart of Jesus. But in this instance, he has never seen anything like this. He has never seen Jesus in these dimensions of glory. He has never. You see, when you come before a glory, there is a personality behind that glory. When the Bible talks about the glory of the sun and the glory of the moon, that they differ, and the glory of the stars, that they differ. There are personalities behind those glory. So when John came around this glory, and then he was able to travel through that glory, that was when he, that was when he met the personality that is behind this glory. Inside the moon, there are creatures because Everything that you see on earth are either living beings or living habitation. Everything you see on earth, they are either living beings or what? Or living habitation. When you look at the earth in Revelation chapter 12, the Bible said the earth opened its mouth to help the woman. So the earth is a living habitation. That's why it has mouth. And it can use that mouth to help. So when you look at the sun, it's a living habitation. There are creatures around the sun. There are creatures around the moon. <laughs> and when you enter into their glory, because what we call glory is actually access into realms. That's what we call glory. It's an access. Then it, 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 the access leads you to a personality. Inside the sun, there are entities that are inhabiting the sun <laughs> that you can meet, whether of the dark order or of the light order. Oh my goodness. When, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you meet with the moon, there are entities within it. When you meet, when you, when, when you meet the star, there are entities. And that is why people who worship star is because of those entity. It's because of those entity. And when you pass through the glory of those uh, 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 orbits, objects, you there are personalities that you meet. There is the glory around the Lord that we need to traverse. When you pass through that glory, the, 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 the person you meet is the Lord himself. So when, when the curtain of the spirit was opened and, and John began to move in the realms of the glory, he made contact with a personality. You see, the appearances of Jesus here was what he was asking for. And when he said, Father, glorify the Son. And the Father answered, he said, I glorify you because you ask again, I will glorify you. Jesus in his glorified state is what he meant. And this will be the first time that is, is going to happen. And that was the re reason why Jesus needed to reintroduce himself unto John. Because this level of glory that John has come to see he has never seen it before, unless he mistake it for another personality. So Jesus has to reintroduce himself. And so and that, 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 was a, that was a fear, the last kind of fear that need to go, which is the, the, the fear for life, the fear for living itself. That was, he fell as dead before him because there was nothing inside of him that could contain that Jesus, that he said that. It was not the kind that he laid his head on his bosom. No, 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 
No, it was not the kind that uh, Peter was trying to fight for by cutting one of the ears of, of the songs of the priest. No, no, no. It was not the kind that th they took away from Gethsemane. No, no, no. This one, when he entered into the presence of this one, he fell as though. And then the Lord has to come and lay his hand on him and revive him and cast out the fear, the, the depth of, of, of human fear and cast it out in him and say, fear not. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and who was dead. And behold, I am alive forever. More, amen. And I have the kings of AIDS and the kings of death, write the things which you have seen. The things which are, and the things which will take place. After this, the things which are, and the things which must take place after this. This is our meat. This is the bread that the Lord has come to give to us this morning. This is our bit. This is the bread. The things which must take place. You see the reason why the Lord has to lay his hand upon? Because if that hand does not come upon him, number one, he will not rise from that state of death. And fear will filter some of the things that the Lord is saying. There will not be details about the things which will take place thereafter and the things which are there will not be details the lord has to lay hand on him oh i remember several years ago when the lord used to come to me he would wake me up and he would sit beside me on the bed and he would begin to talk to me and he would talk and talk and for hours i would come out of that experience i will remember a jack you see hand has not been laid upon me I have not died yet before the Lord. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. So I can't keep the scroll. I can't, I have not been given the scroll to eat. The scroll has not become my food. You know where my friend started? He said, bread will be given unto us. <laughs> he said, today. It's for a location of bread. That is a bread that is a bread for this season. That bread is stronger than healing. That bread is more than meeting your needs. I am sure that you learn that your needs are melt. But I want to tell you, if there is a bread that the Lord has given unto us, is the bread that will bring his pleasure upon the face of the earth. The Lord is returning, and he must have full and complete preeminence upon the face of the earth. There is a bread from him that must go ahead of us into the nations of the earth. We are the hand and we are the feet of the Lord that will feed the nations of the earth so that they can come into righteousness. This bread that the Lord is offering this generation is a bread that has not been given to any at any time. Is a bread that will not only bring men unto God, but it will open their sight. They will see the Lord clearly as he descend from the cloud. Is a bread that open eyes. Is a bread that open ears. Is a bread for all. Are we ready to take this bread this morning? Are we ready to take this bread this morning? Are we ready to take this bread this morning? Are we ready to take this bread this morning? This is the bread that we tumble into the host of the of the of the of the, of, of, of the Midianites, and it will scatter them. Is the bread of victory? Is the bread of triumph? Is the bread of life? This is the bread that I've come for you this morning. Can we begin to come before the lost table? For He has prepared a table before us and in the presence of our enemies.
This is the bread that a man will eat and live and not die. Bread! He covered his services. Le velo covele ties covini esesi sezi livini sis koma la krivi esesi o farabi eni kan gravadi esi. The Lord is offering Himself this morning. Who is in the house? Who is taking it? Who is taking it as much as you can? This is manna falling freely from heaven. Le visi sisu fili brevi ni ise fili bra. Eli kri di sisi o marini idia. This is more than the show bread. This is more than the manna that fell, oh God, from heaven in the wilderness. For our father ate of this and they died. But this one that shall offer you, this is the bread that the man will eat and he will live. This is eternal life. Knowing God and knowing Jesus beyond the veil, beyond the flesh, between him in, his, in the fullness of his glory. Beholding his face and hearing from him, from him, from him. Bile kila grihete fisisi sovia para fisisi agarade kiko kovele songs. Bile kola vreti si shilagara dadaya. Can you express your desire for the bread this morning? Lucevia bile kuli hisisu loba bile kuti bila kolami kola. Scrolls are available for men to eat this morning. Scrolls are available for men to eat. Legotas is a silo. A villain is easier. Yelali is easier. A cola kiki. A lissis is susufro sisia. Parayama, a kaku kakaka. Shake it to susus 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 susus. Yelu aria, a farmer. Eli Quavola, Pialo Ho Ho, Sai Hikelaba, Melecriti Sisi, Paradia, Lobe bread available so that the eyes of the nations can be opened, so that the nation can begin to know that, oh, we didn't know, we didn't know that all our postulations, all our legislations are against the Lord. And the law for which they have legislated shall suddenly appear unto them, and they will mourn. Come and be sis to see the Allah, so that the sins of the nations can be cleansed. Only is this here the only vision of Brian? This is only a craving. He says, "Let the servants of the Lord begin to arise from among us." Special message with special mysteries. The living is so far la brevi, and no cobre metis is here. Kelavra yellows, come and eat critic. Mini crodia coffe la critis kefileba. Shall I bring his session? Bali crodi the altar. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Bless your people. He their wounds. In their wounds, let sickness be gone, let disease be gone, let the anointed fall, minister to the need of your people, and let your name alone be glorified. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Let reach out to the Lord because all needs can be met now. The Lord is in the house. Thank you, thank you. Le fisi la variatis e le covelatis. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 